Well, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and thank you so much for joining on to the Life of Signatures podcast. This is a podcast where we talk about purpose, productivity, and resilience. It is a daily podcast. It's a daily show where I am passionately explaining these things, and I'm glad that whatever place in this world that you're tuning in, you're finding this valuable to you. And indeed, if you're finding it valuable to you, please make a point of sharing it with as many people in your circle calls as possible, especially in this series that we are talking about street smart children. If you are a parent, please make sure that you're sharing this with your spouse, uh, your co-parent, share it with your parenting group and so on. And you guys just have a blast and having a discussion about raising street smart children. We've been talking about that, how we can be able to do that. Eight pillars of raising street smart children. And today, we're going to come to a conclusion of pillar number one, which we started about five episodes back. Can you believe it? And then we're going to go to pillar number two in the episode starting tomorrow. But today, let us deal with this. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. pillar that we've been talking about of raising a street smart child it is the pillar of survival you can actually go back five episodes back and you can see where we started talking about these things but i'm going to do for you a recap so that you can be able to learn and can be able to see where i am coming from see the first thing we talked about survival is that you need to lead lead them to take care of themselves let the children take care of themselves let them learn to take care of themselves the second thing we talked about was let them be responsible. Teach these kids responsibility. The third thing we talked about is teach them to be resourceful. Very e- extremely important. And the fourth thing we talked about yesterday was teach them to be resilient. And it's going to go hand in hand with the fifth thing that I want to talk about today. The fifth thing is mental toughness. Ay, 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 ay. I tell you this, there is nobody who is going to be street smart without the aspect of mental toughness. Mental toughness has very many connotations. I did a a whole series of mental toughness on these episodes in this podcast. It has an idea of decision making. It has an idea of determining to stay put. It has an idea of saying no. It has an idea of resilience, like we talked about resilience yesterday. There is nobody in this whole wide world who can tell me that they are street smart and they do not have an idea of mental toughness or an iota of mental toughness inside of their lives. This is critical. This is key. To be mentally tough is to actually lead yourself even as you lead others in these environments that we live in. But most especially is to live, primarily lead yourself and make tough decisions and stay on course and stay on purpose and stay in the direction that you're supposed to take in this life. That is what street smartness is all about. And this is what is needed in this real world. This real world we live in need people who are mentally tough. 
Mentally, it have to make very unpopular personal decisions. Mentally, it have to face tough situations that you've got to go through, that you must go through, instead of postponing and procrastinating them. Mentally, it have to draw a line in the sand and pay a price for things and delay your comfort so that you can discipline yourself in this particular moment in time. If you find a child who is mentally tough, that child is destined to succeed. But if you find an adult who is not mentally tough already, that adult is not making it in this life. It's already been alluded to that mental toughness is critical in being a survivor. Mental toughness is only developed when this child is challenged. Keyword challenged and not just once challenged over and over and over again to go outside of status school so that they can become exposed to different scenarios in life and thereby you see mental toughness is the center of it is the mind the center of mental toughness is the mind. And this world has very many wimpy people. And I'm not just saying that this world has many wimpy people. I know I'm speaking to myself sometimes. I can be very wimpy. Something that I'm supposed to make a decision yesterday, last week, last year, last month. Draw a line in the sun and make a decision and follow through. I am still grappling with it. The book should be out by now. But I haven't. I'm still just, you know, loafing around with it. Because I am not mentally tough. A mentally tough person is a finisher. They say that I'm going to do this. They mean they're going to do it. And they stick around until the job is finished. Until the job is done. That is what a mentally tough person does. If your child is going to succeed in this day and in this age, you and I will need to teach them to be extremely mentally tough at this. Now, you see, the way you're going to go about this can be both in a fun way and also in a tough way in a fun way where you create deliberate projects and these are always organized in terms of uh, you know uh, team buildings kind of those team buildings where kids in a particular age are taken out by a particular mentor and they're given challenges to be able to do that are involved in sports and so it is fun for them to try and become mentally tough but the second one is when you keep giving these guys multiple responsibilities to handle and expect them in a particular time frame to turn out results or turn out an explanation or to harness their own faculties and make decisions and when you expect them to try and stand on their own feet and not to wait for you to make a decision for them and then you just gauge and advise and see this was good you could do this better and so on it basically involves coaching but it also involves stretching and it involves expecting from them to produce over and over and over and over again the good news is that once they have got the gist of the matter it becomes embedded in them but it will take some years for this to happen Believe me, it will take some years for this to happen. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, the other way of teaching people to be mentally tough is basically to go through crisis. And unfortunately, we cannot manufacture crisis, but crisis normally comes in our lives once in a while, and when it does, it teaches us to be mentally tough. It can be tough, very, very tough. But that toughness is not useless. It can turn out, there's a guy who said that there's a silver lining in every cloud. So you can teach these guys through physical exercises, mental exercises, change of environment, by the way, right? And it teaches them to be mentally tough. Mental toughness is important in raising street smart children because the world is not necessarily a soft place. This world of ours is... (laughs) 
it's an it's a crazy world we live in i know someone said it's a man's world but it's a crazy world we live in it's a dark it's a fallen world you blink once and you're gone i'm telling you 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 what do they normally say you bitten in the back is it biting in the back you what do they normally say someone does at your back you Anyway, someone takes advantage of you. Someone close to you. Stab you in the back. Why did the word stab disappear? You're stabbed in the back by someone you'd not even expect. In fact, <laughs> that's how you can become mentally tough. You need to say no to the people that you love the most. Because you've got to do some things that are unpopular. But they are right. That's mental toughness. You need to stay right with your values. That's mental toughness. You need to overcome temptation. That's mental toughness. It's not an easy thing. It is not taught in school. It is not taught even at home sometimes. It needs to be experienced. You need to expose your child to this. So if you cannot manufacture a crisis, at least take these guys to some organized environment where these things are being taught. Military boot camps, they normally happen for very many people and very many organizations use the military to train them and, and, and so on and so forth. They give them a soft way of, of doing it. It is going to be very invaluable for our children to learn survival. There are some clubs that we, you can, the, the kids can join, like the President's Award Scheme, where kids sometimes are taught things like you know going out there to... Uh, to do what to 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 hike using compasses and so on and so forth but it is important that they are exposed to these things if the exposure exposure is not there they will not become mentally tougher they will not survive in this world so aspect number one of teaching children to be street smart the first pillar is survival under that pillar number one teach them to take care of themselves Number two, teach them to be responsible. Number three, teach them to be resourceful. Number four, teach them to be resilient. And then number five, teach them to be mentally tough. Tomorrow, we look at pillar number two. But until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.